Hey, it's Lara back with your weekly horoscope. You can find me soon at astrologymaven.com. So if you head over there, you can get on my email list and you can find out when my new site is launching and you can also um, get my free guide to working with the moon. So here I am, uh, today's video, you can see I'm in the same place as last week in my bedroom. Um, you know, continuing to get my new workspace set up. It's almost done. But even then, uh, it's, it's in a more open area in the house. And with three teenagers here uh, over the summer, <laughs> it's hard to record in an open space. So here I am. Um, and also didn't have a lot of time to prep today. So we're going to be on the fly a little bit and keeping it a little shorter. Just, uh, you know, because things happening. And um, before I forget, I want to just let you know there's... A possibility I may not be here next week, next Tuesday. Um, I normally record these videos on Tuesdays so that they're ready to go for Wednesday. Um, but it's we're going to be gone and then it's my son's birthday. So if I get a chance, I'll be here. And if I don't, then apologies. But uh, I'll post something on Facebook and Instagram. And you can find me there too. If you click the links below, you can come join me there. So... <clears throat> This video, we're covering um, July 21st to the 27th, 2021. We go sort of, you know, Wednesday to, to Wednesday. And um, we've got a full moon happening this week, a full moon in Aquarius. So that's what we're going to focus the video on. But there's quite a bit of other stuff going on aside from that full moon that I want to let you in on. Um, so we'll we'll kind of take it through, you know, what's going on and then we'll circle back to that full moon and we'll cover it in a little bit more detail and we will, of course, take you through the signs so that you know how this full moon is um, impacting you personally. Okay, so we've got the moon in Sagittarius right now as you, you're listening to this recording. Well, if, you know, if you're listening to this recording as it comes out on Wednesday, the 21st of July 2021 the moon is in Sagittarius and it will move to Capricorn later tonight and then um, enter Aquarius on Saturday when we'll have that full moon and it will move on into Pisces on Monday so but before we get there we have like I said several other things that are happening so we've got um, today, again, Wednesday, July 21st, Venus is moving out of Leo and entering Virgo. So Venus does not love to be in Virgo. Um, and, you know, because Virgo is one of those places for, for Venus where Venus has a bit of a hard time getting comfortable to do Venus's job, right? And Venus looks after things like our relationships and um, our resources and our sense of beauty and aesthetic um, and really you know our sense of pleasure and how we experience the pleasures in life right that's Venus and so in Virgo you know Venus uh, can feel a little bit nitpicked now Listen, I'm a Virgo rising. I'm not picking on Virgos by any stretch. And I think that Virgo gets a bad rap. And a lot of people treat Virgo as this very one dimensional kind of um, sign that, you know, Virgo is just about being nitpicky and, and uh, you know, <clears throat> clean freaks and all of that. And that's really not, uh, not the case. Virgo is quite complicated, actually. Virgo is a mutable um, earth sign and very very connected to this sense of purity and so Virgo really likes to fix things and in order to fix things and make things better which Virgo always strives to do you have to notice what's not working you have to notice the details you have to be very very discerning um, you know and of course <laughs> that can get to the point of being overly critical. Um, oftentimes with Virgo, our Mercury ruled sign, 
that criticism is actually directed at the self. Um, there's a lot of self-talk that goes on, right? Mercury is the planet that deals with, among other things, our, our thoughts, our communications, our ideas, um, and, and our self-talk even. And so there can be a lot of critical self-talk that goes on with Virgo. And so, you know, I don't want to belabor this, but Venus and Virgo can be very, very um, choosy about what it finds beautiful. Um, it can have a hard time. We can have a hard time kind of like letting our hair down and really enjoying you know, the, the, the pleasures in life with Venus and Virgo, because it can be like, let me give you an example. Say you go out for a really nice meal. Um, you know, that's a Venusian experience. And with Venus and Virgo, it can be, um, either, you know, the meal is meticulously prepared, crafted, presented. Um, it could be, you know, several courses that are, finely tuned, that sort of thing. You know, the, the wine is matched perfectly um, and, all, and all of that. Or it can be, you know, the person who is impossible to please, no matter how good it is, um, they will notice the one small thing that's not just right. So, and then you lose out on what could have otherwise been a good experience, a pleasurable experience, because you're just noticing, you know, the, the things that are not perfect. And so, you know, we can like pick out the flaws. Um, like if this is directed at ourselves, for example, we may be self-critical in terms of our looks, our appearance. Um, we can, you know, be, let's let's take it in another direction we could also like this is a good time say to start cleaning and um tidying which we've been doing a lot of i've been doing a lot of around here and it's like it's a good time to kind of purge things to you know to polish things up to um to go through like papers and things like that with a fine tooth comb and and be discerning right like um, do I need, really need this? And, and then that beautifies your space, right? You're taking care of all of those fine details, which is a very Virgo thing. And ultimately it's having an impact, a positive impact on the aesthetic on your space. So that's a, a good, you know, good way to use it. Venus in Virgo, it is also like, <clears throat> excuse me, meticulous craftsmanship, like somebody who works you know, with their hands or, or does some kind of like artwork or creative project um, that is just absolutely high end. Um, very, very, you know, serious attention to detail. This can be um, crafting even things like, um, you know, herbal teas or um, beauty products you know, if you're making nat like natural beauty products or something like that. And, and, you know, you're very, very meticulous about it and discerning about it. So that gives you a, a whole bunch of examples on both ends of the spectrum about Venus and Virgo. So that's what's going on there. Um, and then the following day on Thursday, so uh, the 22nd, the sun moves into Leo, the sign of its rulership, right? And so the sun is very strong in Leo. It's at home in Leo. So it can be really true to, to form, um, you know, the sun is that central guiding principle, right? I've used that phrase before that I borrowed from Demetra George. The sun is, um, that which everything else revolves around. It is the light of, you know, and the heat that's responsible for, cre you know, the creation kind of thing of, of life, right? So the sun is very strong in Leo and right at that same time that the sun moves into Leo, hearkening in Leo season 
happy birthday Leo sun signs. I have two of those in my house, actually. Both of my kids are Leo suns. Um, and my husband's a Leo rising. So lots of Leo going on here. But on the same day that that happens, we have Venus um, in newly in Virgo opposing Neptune in Pisces. So, you know, I think this is kind of like a little bit of, you know, okay, Venus, you're moving into Virgo. We know you want to take care of details. You want everything to be just so, but remember the sweet spot, right? Don't overdo it. Like attention to detail is great, but Neptune is saying, look at the bigger picture. Um, you know, it's okay to kind of like dream a little, um, it's okay to allow for things to be as they are and not, you know, be really, um, all caught up in making it perfect. So, um, that's what's going on on Thursday. And then on the 22nd or the 23rd, sorry, we have that full moon in Aquarius. So, I'm going to circle back to that in a minute. I just want to talk to you about a couple of other things. After the full moon happens, the day after the full moon on the 24th, we have Mercury trining Neptune. And then immediately following that on the 25th, Mercury is opposing Pluto and Capricorn. So it's kind of like, um, well, before I say this, and right after that on the 27th, Mercury then moves into Leo, right? Joining the sun. So next Tuesday. And so here's the thing. It, it seems like it may be a bit of a flurry of communication or ideas or information exchange or something like that going on in relation to this Cancer Capricorn story that we talked about a lot in last week's video. So if you didn't see that, then I really suggest that you go back and watch it. Um, because it, it feels like right before Venus enters Leo, it's got something to say. It's like one more thing to communicate in the story that's been going on over the last few weeks, right? So, um, that's Mercury. So I think that's just about it in terms of the other things that are playing out over the course of this week. So let's talk a little bit more about this full moon. Um, so the light's a little bit weird in here today. The weather has been strange. It was unbelievably hot for several days and humid. Um, and we were getting some smoke from the fires that are happening um, west of us, quite, you know, in, in a different province. But the wind changed direction and then it really cooled off. So, um, and it's, it's kind of cloudy and stuff out there. Anyway, I digress. So... Full moon in Leo, July 23rd. Uh, not in Leo, in Aquarius, sorry. So if this full moon is happening at one degree of Aquarius, which you may or may not recall is significant because that's where the Great Conjunction took place on the solstice of 2020. December 21st, Saturn and Jupiter met up at one degree of Aquarius. Um... And that was the great conjunction, right? That cycle that all the astrologers, including myself, were talking about um, that happens over the course of, well, Saturn and uh, Jupiter meet up every 20 years. So this marks, you know, that marked the beginning of a 20 year cycle. But this one was extra significant because it was the first time that it was happening in an air sign for 800 years because what happens when Saturn, uh, just to refresh your memory, in case you forgot, Saturn and Jupiter meet up in the same element for a period of about 200 years at a time. So prior to December 2020, when, you know, December 21st, when that great conjunction happened, there were, um, you know, these conjunctions between Saturn and Jupiter were happening in earth signs for like 200 years. So 
this is that was a big shift right and we're still just at the very beginning of that and it seems that this full moon which is um taking place at that first degree of aquarius is is illuminating something around that for us at this point so um like all full moons what's happening with um the sun and the moon at the time are they're opposite each other in the sky i didn't even print out the chart today but um, we don't really need it it's so the sun is um newly in leo at the time of this full moon and then the moon is in aquarius right leo's opposite sign so they're across the sky from each other and they're in opposition which is this push-pull energy this um energy of a need for compromise or balance or bringing two opposing things together or looking at two opposite sides of the same coin so to speak um so you know all full, full moons are oppositions like this and they represent some kind of culmination of something or an illumination of something um when you know the 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 moon is fully reflecting the light of the sun, so something gets illuminated. Um, we we can have things that are have sort of been bubbling under the surface come up. Oftentimes, that can be an emotional experience at the time of a full moon. Um, you know, it's like the lid can kind of come off at a full moon a little things that have been brewing, things that have been, um, you know, if we've been feeling under pressure about things, then we can, um, there's this release point that can happen at a full moon. So we need to be mindful of the potential for that and um, try to channel that in more constructive, positive ways, right? We can, we can get quite emotional, um, and it's interesting because Aquarius is not an emotional sign. In fact, Aquarius is a bit detached as, a, as an air sign, a fixed air sign. Um, you know, air signs can be a little bit detached from their emotions. And um, they can be like, you know, quite, quite heady kind of thing. So the thing about this is you may get sort of caught off guard by you know, some emotional kind of um, response or reaction that you have. Or, you know, perhaps try to tamp that down a little bit because, and try to think of things, think of things as an air sign um, in a more sort of logical, you know, pragmatic way. Now, Aquarius, Aquarius can be very, Um, what's the word I'm looking for, like attached to their thoughts, their ideas, their, their perceptions, the way they think that things ought to be right. They're a fixed air sign. So the mental, um, piece can be rigid in some ways. So, um, you know, just one thing I would say is like, try not to dig in your heels too much and think like, this, you know, this is what I think. So this is the right way. And, um, everybody else should listen to me kind of thing. Um, so that, that's one thing I would mention, but if you think back to what was going on collectively, but also personally in your own life, um, and in the people's lives around you around that great con conjunction. So, you know, end, end of, um, 2020, the big year, right? Um, then there's something here that is related to, to those themes. And also, if you look back to the new moon that happened in Aquarius on February 11th of this year of 2021, then something was initiated then, some seeds were planted at that time, um, that are now reaching the next level that are now culminating that are now um bearing fruit potentially right things can bear fruit at a full moon and 
they can come up, like I was mentioning, they can come up for release. So it may be like some kind of closure that's happening or opportunity for closure or like um, time to like move on to the next step. Full moons can bring about some sort of like um, a crisis point, right? Which doesn't always mean something bad happens. It, it can be like a time where it's like a critical point in the cycle when we reach a full moon. So think back to, like I said, December 21st, 2020, around there, not like it doesn't have to be that day specifically, and then around February 11th, 2021. What was going on? Um, you know, if you've got like um, old calendars and you've had things written down or journals or what have you, or look back in your emails, those kinds of things, I often do stuff like that if I can't remember <laughs> six months ago or yesterday for that matter. But, um, and it's, it's helpful for you to do that. And you can kind of, um, think about like, okay, that's what was going on. Um, and so this is, you know, these are the same themes. Now, of course, how the degree to which you will experience this or any astrological alignment or placement or transit, well, you know, depend on how it's interacting with your birth chart, right? So in this case, if you have significant placements around the early degrees of Aquarius um, or the other fixed signs of Leo, Taurus, and Scorpio, I have my moon at three degrees Scorpio, for example. Um, so this new, this full moon is squaring my natal moon. Right. So if you have placements like it could be your sun, your moon, your uh, rising sign, your um, like your ascendant, it, or it could be a personal planet like, you know, your natal Venus or Mercury um, or Mars. It, if you have anything around the early degrees of Aquarius or the other fixed signs, like I said, then this will be more personal for you. This will likely be experienced on a more um, intimate level. Even potentially like the very last degrees, say, of, um, sorry, <laughs> what comes before Aquarius, here I am, um, Capricorn, so the, so the cardinal signs, sorry, if you have um, placements around the last degrees of the cardinal signs, so Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, and Libra, then those, you know, may be triggered as well, but we're really focusing more on the fixed signs here. So, um, so if you know your chart, then definitely have a look and see if it's interacting specifically with anything in your own chart, right? And um, if you don't know your chart and uh, you don't know where to get it, or, <laughs> you know, even if you do know where to get it, you don't really know how to configure it or what you're looking at. Um, I'm working on something that may help you. So that uh, will be launched when my website is launched. So stay tuned for that. But okay. Um, told you this was going to be off the cuff today. Oh my gosh. So let's move on to the next point here in terms of the full moon. So we talked about the degree that it's happening at. We talked about the connection to this full moon and the great conjunction and the new moon that happened back in February. Um, and I also think it's important to note that this is one of two full moons in Aquarius that are happening. Uh, so, which is, you know, not something that happens all the time. So what's happening is we've got this full moon and then the next full moon, which, which will be in August, will also be in Aquarius, but it will be later in um, Aquarius at 22 degrees. So no, not 22 degrees. Um, that's something else. Uh, sorry, not 22 degrees. No, at 29 degrees. So that's significant as well because this full moon is happening at the first degree. Well, not zero, but one degree Aquarius, the same place as the great conjunction. Then the next full moon, a second full moon in Aquarius, which doesn't happen all the time, um, is happening at the very last degree of the same sign. So this is like 
this interesting kind of energy that's going on where we've got like these like uh, waves of culmination almost that are happening, right? This, these waves of bearing fruit. And it's like the first, the first wave at the beginning of Aquarius with this upcoming full moon that's happening on <clears throat> the 23rd. And then there'll be another wave, like a, the sort of final culmination of this moon cycle that began back in February. Um, and that's happening in August next month. So it, it, it's whatever is being triggered right now, these themes, right, that relate to the Aquarius house in our chart, which I'm going to get to in a couple of minutes, are, are prominent for us. <laughs> these are prominent themes. Not only are they prominent because of this moon cycle, they're prominent because this is what the Great Conjunction triggered back in um, December. So something to note definitely and also we've got the ruler of Aquarius the ancient ruler of Aquarius is Saturn right the traditional ruler actually of Aquarius is Saturn and um, you know modern astrologers will say Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius I've evolved my thinking um, after you know studying Hellenistic astrology more in more than evolutionary astrology, which is where I got my start. And now I sort of feel that traditional rulerships are the way to go, but I do feel like there is an affinity with the modern rulership. So Aquarius has an affinity with Uranus, I feel like. Um, I'm not sure that I go so far at this point to call it the ruler of Aquarius but you do you, right? And I, and I used to approach it that way too. So I totally understand it. But anyways, my point being is that the traditional ruler of Aquarius, Saturn, and the modern ruler of Aquarius, Uranus, or the other planet that has an affinity with Aquarius, you know, if you will, are in square to each other all year, right? So uh, we've talked about this a lot and they're still at the time of this full moon, they're still within four degrees of an exact square. Like this is not going anywhere. This is the backdrop of 2021, this Saturn Uranus square, this interplay of the old and the new, um, you know, the rules and the rebellion. Um, like, We've talked about this a lot in past videos. I've done several videos on it. You can go back and, and have a look at those. So this is just all that to say, like, there's something big. There's something big going on here that is directly related to, you know, the Saturn Uranus square, the Great Conjunction, um, and, and that full, our new moon back in February in Aquarius. So the Aquarius area of our chart is really... there is some some really hard work going on there you know Saturn is in Aquarius still one of the signs that it rules it also rules Capricorn um, but so so Saturn the, the taskmaster um, is retrograde in Aquarius and it's right now it's at 10 degrees so you know, nine degrees away from the full moon, but nevertheless co-present in that sign and not, not too far away. Um, and Saturn will retrograde back to six degrees. Um, and, and that, and then in October, early October, it will station direct. But I feel like what's happening here, like if I was to kind of put this in a neat little package, I feel like that this, this all has something to do with the hard work we are being asked to do in the Aquarius part of our chart and that if we, you know, if we, um, you know, put on our big girl pants, so to speak, and do the adulting and take the responsibility and be mature about these things, which are all Saturnian things, be patient, um, don't cut corners you know, come at it with the wisdom of the elders, um, then 
there is a sense that eventually this this all pays off that hard work pays off eventually <laughs> right so um that's kind of what i feel like is going on here and so with this full moon we might see that sort of first culmination that's happening like the hard work that we if we've been doing the work in the aquarius part of our chart then we're likely to see maybe the first fruits of that hard work. Um, and we're also likely to see how far we still have to go, right? So, you know, these things take time when you are talking about building something solid. Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius. It doesn't happen overnight, right? So be patient, um, but celebrate those, those small wins or, the, you know, if you, if you see the first, the first fruit on the vine, metaphorically speaking, then that's, you know, a sign that you've, you've been doing the work and it doesn't mean wearing ourselves out, you know, to the point of like complete like exhaustion or burnout. Um, it means Saturn appreciates a one foot in front of the other approach, right? Saturn appreciates a, a, um, you're in it for the long haul. And so, you know, it's not about the quick wins. It's not about the get rich quick schemes. Um, it's not about somebody coming to, you know, a knight in shining armor, armor, swooping in to, to save you and solve all your problems. Um, it's about doing the hard work um, that benefits us as individuals within the collective. That, that's Aquarius, right? Aquarius feels that we all have a contribution, a special contribution. We are all unique in our own way. We should all be allowed to be who we are within the group, right? Aquarius is concerned with the collective, um, concerned with the group, with humanitarian causes, and says that we each have an individual role to play. We each have an obligation to bring our sort of um, uniqueness and our, our, our special skills and talents and our, um, our way of seeing things to the table to benefit the whole. So, you know, Aquarius doesn't like to be rule bound. That's for sure. And so this can be a bit tricky. It's interesting because Saturn is the traditional ruler of Aquarius. And we often think of Saturn as, you know, setting the boundaries, but Aquarius is kind of like the boundary pusher, if you will, what's out beyond the boundaries. Right. And, um, so, so there's this kind of like push and pull this back and forth that goes on between, you know, what's, where are the boundaries? How far can we push them? Um, are we pushing the boundaries in a responsible, mature way? Or are we um, being overly authoritative, um, not allowing for flexibility, um, kind of taking it a my way or the highway approach, you know, that's, that's not necessarily the best way to go. Um, so Aquarius is, <clears throat> the moon is in Aquarius opposite the sun in Leo. So let's just say a little piece about that sun in Leo. Um, Leo is about who am I as an individual? What is my creative, um, you know, potential individually. Um, Leo is about, you know, benevol benevolent leadership and generosity and loyalty and enthusiasm. Leo is about a sense of specialness um, and being recognized. So you can see, right, where we've got this interplay happening between like the individual and the group. Um, how I'm, you know, my need to be recognized for being a, an individual and for my sense of specialness, son and Leo, um, 
and and how and 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 the group right which is aquarius uh, um so that's the energy at the time of this full moon one more thing i want to say before i take it through the signs is that jupiter is moving out of its home sign of pisces and you know, because it's retrograde right now. And that's happening on July 28th, which if I do a video next week, I'll talk about that in more detail. But I wanted to mention it here because, you know, this is significant as far as this full moon goes as well. On the 28th, Jupiter moves out of Pisces and back into Aquarius for the most of the rest of this year. It will station direct on October 22nd. No, not October 22nd, October 10th, I think it is, at 22 degrees Aquarius. So it's going to retrograde all the way back to 22 degrees of Aquarius. And then it's going to eventually return to Pisces again in late December of this year. And so we've just had, for the last few months, a taste of Jupiter in Pisces. It only moved through the first two, three degrees of Pisces, right? It's home sign. After being kind of... Um, under the restrictions of, of Saturn ruled houses of Aquarius and Capricorn. So, but here's the thing, Jupiter has some unfinished business in Aquarius. And so is retrograding back into Aquarius. And the good news about this is that it can give us a boost, right? Like Saturn over there slogging away in Aquarius can feel like a real grind. And Jupiter moving back in there, or, although Jupiter's not really super strong in Aquarius, it's still the great benefic. So it it cushions things for us. It um, it allows us a greater sense of optimism. Like like we may you know kind of if we've been feeling a little bit downtrodden or a little bit like we've been spinning our wheels or like working so hard and not getting anywhere or not seeing the fruits of our labors, um, particularly when we're talking about the Aquarius house in our chart and those themes, then Jupiter moving back in there can, can help us um, maybe look on the bright side a little bit and kind of, you know, show us, hey, look, you know, look, like, look at all the good things that you have been able to do from the hard work that you've done here. And this is a good thing, right? So I'm hopeful as far as that goes. It's kind of a bummer in some ways that Jupiter's moving out of Pisces because it's so comfortable there. And like I said, it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been that strong in, in some time. So you know, but we're going to get more of that. So don't, you know, don't lose heart. Jupiter is going to move back into Pisces at the end of this year. And it's going to be there until May. Um, so we'll get a good long taste of it. And then it's going to move back and, you know, it'll make another short stint again. So in Pisces, but right now it knows like it had a break in Pisces. It got to have a little, you know, at home time and um, get some rest and, and chill at home and now it's kind of like okay time to suit up and um, move back into Aquarius move back into Saturn's house for a while and you know maybe Saturn's struggling with some uh, depression or some uh, you know just Saturn's being like kind of too Saturn-y <laughs> if you will too um, too strict too rigid too um, pessimistic and Jupiter's saying, okay, you know, Saturn needs, Saturn needs a bit of a boost. So I'm going to go back and, and help with that until the end of this year. Okay. So I hope that wasn't too blathery and, um, that you get a sense of what this, you know, what's going on this week and what this full moon is about in terms of the overall energy. And now we're going to take it through the signs. So I am using, first of all, for, for those of you um, who may not have been here before, I'm really glad you're here and I hope you stick around. I hope you subscribe to the channel and um, that, you know, you, you come back and uh, hear what I have to say each week. If it resonates 
with you. I'd love to know. I love it when people leave comments or if you have questions down in the comments, I'm happy to answer them. So, but what I want you to know is that I'm using Western Tropical Astrology and I'm using whole sign houses. Um, and I didn't always use whole sign houses, but um, I'm a firm believer now that whole sign houses are the way to go. Um, there are, you know, quadrant based houses, house systems have their merits. Um, but when we're talking about sort of general, we're talking about kind of horoscopic astrology, I, I've really, really come to the conclusion that uh, whole sign is the most um, accurate and um, the most reflective and resonant so but you do you right so and I, I'm also <clears throat> excuse me um, when I do these horoscopes we're talking about because they are general readings we're talking about rising sign first and foremost so if you know your rising sign or your ascendant then that's what to listen for first because it will be sort of the most accurate and the most reflective of your of your real world kind of experience right of that tangible human experience that's going on but you can also listen for your sun sign because sometimes the sun sign may resonate um equally or or even more on occasion than the than the rising sign um and you can also listen to your moon sign your moon sign is more reflective of you know the, the behind the scenes the internal um energies at play so having said all that let's start with uh, one more thing before I start, I'm, if you're new here, I don't always start with Aries, right? So, but I do endeavor to put timestamps every week so that you're not having to like weed through uh, a bunch of signs that you don't want to listen to. Um, but I don't take it Aries to Pisces every week. The way I do it is I, I go through the houses. I start with the first house. Um, I find it's just a little bit more fair that way. So Pisces isn't I'm a Pisces sun, so Pisces isn't always waiting till the end. Uh, and it just, you know, it mixes it up that way and it takes it through the houses. So we're going to start with Aquarius. Aquarius, this is your full moon. And it's one of two full moons for you over the next, you know, month. Because there's this full moon, then we're going to have a new moon, and then another full moon, which will be in your sign. So it's two full moons in your sign, which doesn't happen every year, that's for sure. And um, I really hope that you listened to the intro of this video because I talked a lot about the connection between this full moon, you know, and, and the next full moon that's happening in your sign, which we'll talk about in a different video, but, and how that's related to not only the new moon that took place in February of this year, but also the great conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter that happened at one degree Aquarius, which is where this full moon is happening. Um, and that happened on the solstice of 2020, right? December 21st. So there's a big story going on here and, and you're kind of like at the helm, right? Aquarius, it's because this is happening in your first house. And so you are the star of the show, so to speak. You are, um, you know, the one to watch in a sense. And the first house, so if you're an Aquarius rising, this is happening in your first house. If you're an Aquarius sun, um, you know, and you know what house the sun sits for you, then you can uh, listen for that horoscope as well. But um, if this is happening in your first house, then it's a culmination, uh, you know, a bearing fruit, something being illuminated, some sort of a catharsis or a release um, involving you, involving your sense of self, involving your physical vitality, um, involving how you come at the world and how the world perceives you. So, you know, it's kind of like the whole enchilada, the first house. And so that th there's something significant happening here. Um, this could be, let's give you a couple of examples. Um, you know, something may have transpired around the Great Conjunction. So say like late December to mid-February in there, because the February... Um, 
you know, moon was, was a new moon in your sign. So something may have got off the ground or some seeds were planted, something was initiated and that could have even been like not necessarily even an something, you know, an action that you took, although it could be, it could have been like a thought, an idea that you had, whatever related to yourself, right? Your sense of self, who you are, how you approach the world, how the world perceives you, um, your physical, like I said, your physical vitality. And, and now it's reaching this, this point of culmination, one of two over the next little while. So the, that could have been, um, you were thinking about changing your appearance in some way and back then, and then maybe gradually over time, you know, you've done that. And, and there may be a bit of a, um, an initial reveal that happens around the time of this full moon. Uh, or there could be, um, like, I don't know. It could even be something like, you know, you were thinking about, um, you know, re your relationship status in some regard or something was initiated around relationship around, around that time. And now at this full moon, there is something being illuminated around that something reaching a, a crisis point, a leveling up, a release, a catharsis. Um, so like, you know, um, this could be things like a relationship shift or change that is now causing you to be seen in a different light, like maybe an engagement or maybe, um, you know, thinking about a potential split or something like that. And then, you know, something now at this point is it's transpiring around that. And so it's, it's like, and you're coming at that a little bit differently, right? Or you're coming, um, you're, how, how you um, are perceived by people in terms of your relationship status, for example, may, may change around this time. Um, you know, when we're talking about the first house, it, there could be so many different things that it could involve, but it's, it, you are the central figure in the story. Let's put it that way, right? So this is very personal to you and your life. Um, whatever it is that's transpiring here. And it's, you know, with Saturn in your sign, um, Saturn rules your sign. And so lots of focus there, lots of hard work focus and, um, a, you know, maturity and responsibility um, and adulting kind of thing are being asked of you, right? And so if you've been doing that work, then this is a point in the story where it may, you may see the first fruit on the vine kind of thing of that hard work, right? Okay, so I'm going to leave it there, Aquarius. I'm going to move on. Um, and next we're going to go with Capricorn. So Capricorn, for you, this is happening in your second house. And this full moon, um, you know, one of two full moons in Aquarius that are happening over the next month. And this is connected to what transpired sort of between late December and mid February. And so, because we had the great conjunction on the solstice and then in February we had the new moon in Aquarius. Right. And so think about, think back then what was kind of brewing in relation to your personal resources. And when I mean, when I say that personal resources, I mean your money. So your, your personal finances, your time, your energy, um, you know, the money you make from your skills and talents, whatever you do in the world and, and how you get your needs met, right? How you feed yourself and clothe yourself, um, and put a roof over your head kind of thing. Um, you know, um, second house is about our material possessions. It's about what we value and place worth on, you know, including our sense of self-worth. And so there's been something transpiring here and, um, 
it, it's now reaching this point where you're, 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 um, you may get the first wave of some kind of a culmination of something bearing fruit or some kind of emotional release, um, you know, some leveling up, if you will. And, and we'll see more of that with the next full moon that's happening in Aquarius in August. But so this could be, um, you may have been doing some really hard work, right? Your ruler Saturn is in Aquarius, your second house and asking you to really kind of put your nose to the grindstone or, or perhaps putting up some obstacles and some barriers and really um, making things difficult for you in terms of your personal resources and you know those second house themes and so you know if this hard work has been going on then this can be a time when you start to see the fruits of that labor um, and then you know Jupiter is going to move back in there and give you a, a bit of a boost as well um, as much as Jupiter can do in in Saturn's house so you know if you've um, been kind of struggling in terms of your personal resources, then this can be a time when, you know, you, you see some kind of a culmination there or some kind of a, like I said, a bearing fruit. You know, if you've been working really hard to, um, you know, to say, to make money, to put food on the table um, or to um, really hard on, on your sense of self-worth or you've been, um, there's been something revolving around, you know, your material possessions that, that has been laborious or um, that's been trying in some way, um, then this can be some kind of a culmination there. Um, Like say you kind of forked out some money for something, um, then this could see it like maybe, a, I'm trying to think, something, um, you know, you could have made some purchase in order to, you know how they say you have to spend money to make money. So, so it could be like something that you, you bought in order to grow your business, like some piece of machinery or equipment or technology or, um, something like that. And now you're starting to pay, you're starting to see the dividends return, right? You, you, you forked out that cash and now it's, you're noticing that it was worth it, right? It might've been like, hit you in the pocketbook real hard when it when it first happened but now it, you're kind of seeing that it, it was it was worth it so um yeah that's an example another example I can give you so that's what's going on for you Capricorn I'm going to move on to Sagittarius now where we've got this full moon culminating in your third house so for you Sag something something got off the ground something was initiated something started brewing in the third house for you back between late December around the solstice when we had the great conjunction at one degree Aquarius and like February, um, you know, February 11th was the new moon in Aquarius. And so right around that time or in that time, there were things initiated in your third house, which had to do with um, a variety of topics, but things like communication, how you communicate information exchange, your thoughts, um, you know, the mind in some way, teaching and learning, you know, usually that has to do with um, like an earlier learning environment, like elementary school or high school or learning the basics or teaching the basics. Um, things that, you know, revolve around your community, your immediate environment sort of thing. So, and the people in it. So siblings, peers, cousins, neighbors, teammates, friends that feel like siblings, um, even, uh, you know, something involving sort of your neighborhood or your community in some way, uh, short, short trips, short distance travel, 
marketing, commerce, communications. These are all third house themes. So something was kind of like, you know, the first seeds were planted late December to, to early February. And now we're reaching this point of we're like the initial culmination point, right? And there's going to be another one in August because we have a second full moon coming in Aquarius as well. But this is the point where we, we maybe see the fruits of our, our labors of whatever work we've been putting in, in, in relation to those third house themes, if you're a Sagittarius rising. And so, you know, if you've been doing the work there, then, um, you may see the rewards. So, you know, I'm just thinking like, for example, if like we, we don't have, my, my son is a Sagittarius moon. So we don't have, we didn't even get his report card yet. And so, um, you know, the school is, he's in high school, the school is mailing it. And there was a lot of, obviously with COVID, there was a lot going on around that time. And there was actually, um, you know, for him, I'm thinking of this specific example where there was a period where they, they actually went back to school and then like three weeks later they were all online again. And right around that time was also a, a shift from first semester where they were taking, you know, four specific classes and that went pretty well to second semester where there were four different classes, which was, um, for, you know, it was more of a challenge and more of a struggle and everybody was a little bit done with online learning at that point. And it required a lot of effort Saturn. And so I guess it's one of those things where, you know, not expecting miracles by any stretch, but you know, um, if the work was done, you know, you get the report card, for example, and you see like, you know, you passed kind of thing. And it's a bit of a relief, especially with Jupiter moving back in there. But you also see potentially um, the work you still have left to do, right? So, um, you know, how you can kind of pull up your marks, so to speak, using, using that uh, analogy of school. So it's that kind of vibe going on for you, Sagittarius. And, you know, don't be disheartened if the culmination is not the, the big, um, you know, it's, if it's not cause for like major celebration, there's still time and there's still work to do and that's okay right saturn is oh somebody's car alarm's going off saturn is not one for quick wins like i said saturn wants you to put in the hard work to put one foot in front of the other saturn's trying to teach you the lessons there are no no shortcuts right um there are boundaries there are restrictions there are sometimes obstacles to overcome and so um but if we do the work, we do reap the rewards and they might come incrementally, right? Which is kind of evidenced by the fact that there are two full moons happening in Aquarius over, over a month. So we might get like the first little win or release or um, illumination of something and then another one happens. So um I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could say about that or any example I could give you, you know, say, say you're somebody who's been, um, there's been something going on, you know, for your siblings or your peers, uh, that, that sort of started to happen back around between December and, and early February. And, and it's, you know, it was a bit of a struggle. Um, and now you're seeing, whoever that is, or those people reach that, that first kind of culmination point of that or something, you know, the first kind of, um, crisis point or the first release or bearing fruit of the hard work, uh, comes to pass around now. Many other examples, but I gave you the themes of the third house. So think about those themes and how these are significant in your life you know, and will continue to be for the remainder of this year. Um, and, you know, you'll get a sense of, of what this is about for you specifically. 
Okay, moving on to Scorpio. Scorpio, for you, this full moon is culminating in your fourth house. So that's the house that has to do with home, family, place of living, your roots, your ancestry, um, the legacy you have been left, um, your connection to sometimes like um, more nurturing figures or mother figures in your life, parents in general, um, you know, like real estate, potentially your sense of emotional security. These are all fourth house themes. And so there's something going on here, right? This is a, it's a larger story that, that kind of began back in, back at the end of 2020 around the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter at one degree Aquarius. And then, you know, we had an initiation of sorts in February with the new moon in Aquarius. So if you think back to the, that period, like late December to sort of early mid February, what was going on in relation to those fourth house themes for you? And, you know, there's been some hard work going on because Saturn wants us to, wants us to put our nose to the grindstone, right? And at this point now where we've got this first of two full moons in Aquarius, you may see this initial bearing of fruit, this initial culmination, this initial illumination of some description or a, a turning point, um, a catharsis, uh, you know, something bubbling up. And that is directly related to those fourth house themes. And, and you've got um, another culmination point to come in later August at the second full moon in, in Aquarius. So it's like these um, these pulses that are happening, right? In the Aquarius house for us. And so, um, for you, Scorpio rising, that has to do with, um, your fourth house of, of, like I said, your home and your family and your roots and all those things, right? And if you've been doing the work there, if you've been doing some hard work in relation to those themes, then, this is what Saturn's been asking of you and you should start to, to see it bear some fruit and, you know, Jupiter moving back into Aquarius, back into that house for you until the end of December is, is helping you in some way. You know, Jupiter's not super strong in Aquarius, but it's, it's kind of better than Saturn, you know, really being there alone. Um, although Saturn rules Aquarius, but Jupiter can at least come in and go, Hey, Saturn, lighten up, uh, you know, can I make you a cocktail <laughs> kind of thing? Um, so, you know, there's, there's that to, I think, uh, look forward to. So that's for you. Um, like I'm thinking, let me just give you one more example. Like if you sort of were thinking about, or you started some kind of like house renovations, for example, way back at the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021, 20, uh, then maybe you're kind of now being able to see the, the first, uh, you know, results of that. And I know building materials have been insanely expensive um, and hard to come by. And so maybe there's been some delays because of that. And maybe now we're going to see, you know, prices starting to drop or availability increased or something like that. And so, you know, there's more opportunity to, to do these kinds of things. So that's, that's one example. So that's for you. Scorpio and I'm going to move on to Libra now we're Libra we have this full moon culminating in your fifth house so for you this speaks to themes of pleasure um, how you have fun in life you know what sparks joy for you your hobbies um, children and your creative pursuits and you know your creative self-expression that which you create including children right and so um, there's something that's been again in the works here that was initiated in late December. Um, and you know, it, that was where we had the Saturn Jupiter conjunction on the solstice and at one degree Aquarius, the same point in the sky as this full moon. And then we had the new moon in Aquarius, you know, at that initiation point in February. And so if you think back to that time period, like what was transpiring 
um, in terms of those fifth house themes that I just mentioned. What was what was coming into your thoughts, into your awareness um, about those themes, right? And now we've got this first opportunity for something bearing fruit there. If it's been laborious, hard work, all of that, and if we've been pulling up our big girl pants and doing the work, you know, and trying our best to overcome the obstacles um, and be patient and, and all of that Saturnian work, then we're likely to see something come to pass at the time of this full moon that is, you know, a, a leveling up, like I said, a bearing fruit, a culmination, an illumination. And so, um, and then we've got another point in August because we have a second full moon in Aquarius, right? So this could be things like, you know, your relationship to pleasure, for example, and, and the fun and having fun in life. And, um, you know, that has no doubt been stunted <laughs> with uh, the pandemic, but it, it could be that there was something sort of that happened in relation to those pleasure pursuits end of December into February. And now, uh, you know, there's a, this opportunity for um, seeing the results of, of the work that you've put in there. And, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean like physical work. When I say that it could be mental labor, you know, emotional labor. Um, those are very valid forms of labor. So, um, I'm just trying to think here of an, a specific example. So say, but you know, when we're talking fifth house, a major theme is children. And so say you are, uh, somebody who was considering um, having kids and maybe you know that maybe it's taken a while um, to work up to it or there's been delays or you know it hasn't been happening or you're having fertility issues or what have you um, maybe around this time of this full moon something happens that that shifts that that you you know you it bears fruit like um you know you are able to maybe see a fertility specialist or maybe find out you're pregnant or maybe um you know your partner comes around and decides that yes now's the time or maybe something's been going on in your kids lives that you know has required a lot of uh hard work from them like for example right the kids have been not having a lot of fun <laughs> um, because of the pandemic. Uh, and so now where I am anyways, we're, we're now opening up uh, significantly. We have been over the last few weeks. And so there's a lot more opportunity to get out and about, as we say <laughs> in Canada, and, and uh, have some fun, you know, with friends. And so a bit of a can breathe a bit of a sigh of relief there, but there's still Saturn's in Aquarius. There's still a need for being kind of, you know, cautious and, um, you know, we're still wearing our masks when we go in places and those kinds of things. So see what I mean? Um, that's a good example that I can give you. And I could go in lots of different directions there, but if you think about the fifth house themes that I gave you and what, has been transpiring, you know, and we kind of got off the ground, like I said, back late, late December into February and where that's at for you now, right? Pay attention. What's coming to pass there. Um, and understand that this is only kind of the first wave of, of bearing fruits or of culmination or of catharsis or release or, or crisis point or whatever it is for you specifically, right? In relation, because there's another full moon happening in August in Aquarius. So, all right. I'm going to move on to Virgo now. So Virgo rising, um, you know, or if you're a Virgo sun or moon listening to this, but for Virgo rising specifically, this is happening in your sixth house. And so, um, this is, this is me. I'm a Virgo rising. And so the sixth house speaks to themes of the daily grind <laughs> of, um, the work you do on the day to day, whether it be paid or unpaid, it's the house of, of um, toil. It's the house of um, illness and health. 
and your routines around that and the work you do around that and um, it's it's the house of pets um, if that pertains to you it's the house of service right and again that could be paid or unpaid it, it's the house of work in the sense that you know it can speak to your job but it's more like um like the work that you're doing it's not like kind of like speaking necessarily to your to your um your career overall that's more 10th house and and the mc you know it's not like your your it, it's more your your daily work um so it can be about your job your daily job that you do you know um so this but there's a sense of like having to put in the hard work there's a sense of um of toil when it comes to the sixth house that there's kind of no sugar coating that and so you know this is speaking to something that started to transpire late december in you know into february like in that time frame, kind of like the seeds were planted or got off the ground or some shift took place there that was an initiation of sorts in your sixth house. And so, you know, speaking to those themes that I just mentioned, and it's required some hard work. Could be physical work. It could be emotional, mental work. Um, it could be all three. <laughs> it could be some health difficulties. Um, it could be... Um, you know, just this sense of like all work and no play sort of thing. Um, and now as we have this full moon culmination point, the initial culmination point, right? Because we will have another one in August, another full moon in Aquarius speaking to these same themes. Um, but we, we're getting this sense of like, you know, our hard work is at least starting to pay off. But, but also there's still more work to do but at least we can see a little bit of the fruits of our labor and we are, we're able to like, you know, are there some kind of like catharsis around the work we've been doing or release, um, or, you know, emotional kind of, um, letting go in some way as, you know, as a good way to put it as well. Um, and so, I mean, to speak to my own experience, there has been, a lot of work that's been going on and most of it has not been paid work so you know way back in the day <laughs> the sixth house was considered the house of, of slavery right and so um, it's like working really hard and not seeing a, necessarily seeing a lot of um, reward for your hard work in the sixth house it takes time it takes effort it's strenuous, it's exhausting. Um, but if we do the day to day and we keep, you know, we're devoted to that work and we keep putting one foot in front of the other, then eventually there is an opportunity here for that um, to pay off, right? So, I'm going to leave that there. Sorry, I just was taking a minute to think if there's anything else I wanted to say, but I think that's good, Virgo. Look at the sixth house themes, right, for you. Um, compare that, you know, what's been going on in your life and look forward in some ways to this release point and the fact that, you know, Jupiter, yeah, Jupiter's moving out of Pisces, which is kind of a bummer because it really likes to be in Pisces. It's at home there. But we're going to get more of that. Right now, Jupiter is needed in Aquarius. So Jupiter is going to go back into Aquarius, into the sixth house for you, and bring some cause for optimism in that house. Like, it might not be like, you know, a big old celebration, but it's at least a bit of a like, like I was saying, I can't remember to what sign. It's like, you know, Saturn's just been like nose to the grindstone and just like cracking the whip <laughs> to do the hard work in the sixth house and Jupiter is coming back to stay with Saturn for a while to go, uh, listen, maybe just take it down a notch. Maybe just like, don't work so hard, you know, like maybe just for, for, a, just for a minute here, put your feet up and, you know, have a, have a cup of tea or a glass of wine or something like that. Right. So, 
that's what's going on. Um, and then Jupiter will move back, you know, Jupiter will do that work and then move back into Pisces um, at the end of this year. But it has work to do and help, it has to help Saturn there in your sixth house. So that's what's going on for you, Virgo. And next we've got Leo. So Leo, for you, this full moon is culminating in your seventh house of your close personal relationships, right? This can be your significant other. Um, if that pertains to you, but it can also be things like business partnerships, uh, close friends, family members, anybody that you have sort of one-to-one -one relationship with. It can be about contracts and agreements in the seventh house. It can be about your rivals. And these are the people that you're in competition with that you kind of, you know, you're in competition with, right? It's not the people that are like, um, talking behind your back and, and, you know, secretly sabotaging you or anything like that. This is like, you know, known rivals um, in the seventh house, but it's, it is the house of one-to-one -one relationship essentially. And so for you, Leo, think back, think back to late 2020, early 2021. Um, you know, we had the Saturn Jupiter conjunction at the same degree of Aquarius that this full moon is happening at. And then we had the new moon in Aquarius in February. So something was initiated then um, that has to do with your relationships or t contracts and agreements potentially, you know, or rivals, like I, you know, was saying as well. And now with this initial full, full moon in Aquarius, there's some culmination point being reached. Like can be, you've been doing some really hard work in, in terms of relationship and you're seeing the fruits of the, your labors or, um, you are, um, you know, there may be some kind of cathartic experience or emotional release or, or, or illumination about something around relationship that's happening for you. And then there's going to be a second opportunity for that in August when we have the second full moon in Aquarius. And, you know, the sun is in your sign at the time of this full moon and really kind of shining its light on you. Um, you know, but the moon is opposing that, right? And so there's this kind of push-pull energy going on and your axis of relationship, of self and other kind of thing. Um, and the give and take that goes on there. So, you know, think back, think, think in terms of your relationships, think in terms of your contracts and agreements if that pertains to you. Um, and, and consider, you know, what is this about for you specifically and you personally? Um, and, you know, know that Jupiter moving back into that house from now till the rest of, to, you know, till December, the late December of this year is attempting to take the pressure off a little bit in that seventh house and um, hopefully, you know, bringing a little bit of uh, optimism, right, to, to Saturn's often very sort of stringent way of looking things or, or very um, kind of like serious outlook, right? Jupiter's coming in to, to, to lighten things up a little bit there. So that's good, good news. Okay, I'm going to move on to Cancer now. So Cancer, for you, this full moon is culminating in your eighth house of intimacy, of your entanglements with other people, of your shared resources. So things like um, taxes, debt, insurance, wills, inheritance, your partner's money, um, mortgages, um, debt, you know, bursaries, loans, scholarships, all of those things are eighth house related. And so, and you're, like I said, you're, you're intimate entanglements with other people, right? And sometimes those are psychological entanglements. And sometimes, you know, there is like a certain amount of psychological kind of wounding, um, and a call for healing that happens in the eighth house. And, and this, you know, profound sense of like depth and, um, you know, the transformation that comes about from this cycle of, of, of death and rebirth, right? Like, um, so, you know, it's, it's, it can be a trickier, some trickier themes to deal with when we're talking about the eighth house, but also there is this powerful opportunity for uh, like a kind of Phoenix rising from the ashes energy as well. And so, 
something sort of started to transpire or something was like initiated. There was initiation of some sort that, that, that went on around late December of 2020, early in through to early February, like in that time frame, um, in the Aquarius area of your chart, right? Which I just spoke to you about is the eighth house and those themes. And so now we're looking to this point of culmination of like the first bearing of fruit, um, with regards to whatever that, that thing is that's gotten off the ground back then, um, that was initiated, you know, for better or worse kind of thing. And so now there's this bearing fruit, there's this like, um, culmination, there's a release, there may be some kind of catharsis, you know, that may be quite emotional, but that happens, um, or just like an ending or, or closure of some kind that's, that's reached, but it's not kind of like the final straw because there's another full moon in August in Aquarius as well, right? We have two full moons in Aquarius in a month. So it's kind of like there's this pulse point that happens and then there'd be another one as well related to the same themes. Um, and so like, um, just to give you some real world examples, if I can think of any, it could be, um, something related to this, like say business income or your partner's income that was initiated around that December, February through to February timeframe that I was talking about. And now there is, um, like maybe even waiting for some kind of insurance payout or something like that. Right. And it's been a pain in the ass and a lot of hard work. Um, and now you're seeing, you're, 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 you're seeing like the initial results of that. Um, and Jupiter moving back into that ho house for you from late July through to the end of December is, is bringing a little bit more, uh, you know, is lightening the load there a little bit is, is helping Saturn, um, to kind of, um, not be so doom and gloom. And so that's good news. And so, um, there could be, you know, something related to, like I said, your partner's income or some kind of business association, um, an income through business or, or something related to taxes potentially, um, that, you know, transpired around then, um, that's now, you know, coming to, to pass now, um, or you're, like I said, you're seeing the, the initial culmination point or release or letting go in some, in some way. Um, you know, like taking it in a completely different direction. It could be something revolving around some kind of like therapy that you started back, back then. And that, you know, um, you're now kind of like reaching a point where you're kind of seeing like how that's paid off for you or starting to at, at least. Right. So that's a potential as well. So, okay, Cancer, I'm going to leave that there for you. I'm going to move on to Gemini now, where Gemini, this full moon is culminating in your ninth house. And so this speaks to your philosophy and belief system, you know, um, sort of like your bigger picture thinking, uh, your ideas, bigger picture, higher minded ideas about the world, um, you know, your, your sense of meaning. Um, this can speak to teaching and learning. Oftentimes it's things like college university or some like higher level learning it can be about publishing. It can be about, um, teachers like gurus. Um, it can be about religion and religious sort of, you know, dogma. It can be about travel. And long, you know, long distance travel, usually not like travel. We're, we're not talking about like going to the to city, you know, next to yours. We're usually talking about something far away, far away people in places. So different that, you know, different cultures. And sometimes it's armchair chair travel where you don't actually have to get on a plane or, or whatever to go there, but you're learning something, um, on the internet or from reading books or watching documentaries or something like that. Right. Um, that's shifting your perspective or allowing you to have a, to expand your horizons in some way. That's a very ninth house phrase, expanding your horizons. And so something was initiated or something, some seeds were planted or, or there was something, um, you know, that you were thinking about potentially back in late December through to early February in that time frame. And so, you know, now it's this point where like, Maybe hard work was involved there. Maybe it wasn't that fun. Maybe it was like, um, 
there were some disappointments or some obstacles or restrictions, travel restrictions, for example. And now um, we're seeing the first, you know, kind of wave of something's, you know, bearing fruit now, or there's like a catharsis or an emotional release around that or a letting go or a leveling up or a, or a, some things like, like for example, okay, like like to to take a very real example, like you know, you wanted to go somewhere, but you couldn't. You wanted to travel somewhere, but that was impossible because of travel restrictions. But you were thinking about it, um, and you know, or you had actual plans or tickets bought, and then you know, no dice because of the travel restrictions, and now. Things are starting to open up. Like, for example, in Canada, I know that we're opening up to U.S. tourists um, beginning in August. So this fits this time frame, right? Um, that kind of thing is 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 like what this full moon could be about. Like, maybe it's like this initial full moon that's happening at the early degrees of Aquarius. It's like, oh, travel's opening up, so now we can um, buy the tickets, or we can rebook the trip that we had to like cancel. Um, and then, you know, perhaps you actually take the trip at the, the second full moon in August um, in Aquarius. So th that's just an example. Like there's many other directions. This could be related to higher education in some way, you know, and something that you applied for um, and a program that you were hoping to take. Um, and, you know, there were obstacles and delays and all of that stuff. And now maybe you get an acceptance letter or you get a date when it starts or, you know, something along or a delayed, you know, graduation ceremony happens or something like that. So, okay, that's for you, Gemini. I'm going to move on to Taurus now. Ooh, you know, always saying I'm going to keep it short and never happens. But um, Taurus, for you, this full moon is culminating in your 10th house, right? So a very public place in the chart. It's about your public life. It's about your... Um, your sense of authority out in the world or your relationship to authority. It is about your career and your ambitions and your, um, you know, the legacy you wish to leave kind of thing. This is very 10th house. And so for you, um, there is something that has been like, the story has been playing out. It was initiated at the end of December 2020, right around the great conjunction that happened at the same degree in Aquarius as this full moon, at one degree Aquarius. Um, and then there was a new moon, which is a, an initiation point as well, in Aquarius in February. And so around that time frame, something was initiated. And so, th and it had to do with these 10th house themes. And it could feel like a lot of work on your part and maybe not getting very far. Um, you know, it could feel very like there's been delays and obstacles and there's been um, one step forward, two steps back kind of energy that's gone on. And so now at this initial full moon in Aquarius, we're seeing the first fruit on the vine, so to speak. Um, you know, where there's this initial kind of release or culmination point or something coming to pass in relation to those 10th house themes and then we're going to get another hit of that in august at the second full moon in aquarius so like maybe um you know you you were wanting you were thinking about like um a career move and it was just like there was just endless red tape or delays or obstacles or um you know, hard work, like a career move or, or a promotion or something like that. And now maybe you're going to see the, the first um, signs of, of success there potentially, right? And with Jupiter moving back into your 10th house um, at the end of July through to the end of December, Jupiter is going in there to, to finish some unfinished business and to lighten the load for Saturn a little bit. You know, Saturn likes the hard work, but sometimes Saturn can go like a little too far and be <laughs> be like, you know, just cracking the whip too much and, and, and just working us to the point of exhaustion. And so Jupiter is going to go back to Saturn's house and go, hey, Saturn, you know, take it easy a little bit here. Look it, it's not so bad. Look it, I'm here to show you the bright side, right? Or I'm here to show you that, yes, this hard work is starting to pay off, that kind of thing. 
So that's what's going on for you, Taurus. And um, we're going to move on to Aries, where Aries, for you, we've got the full moon culminating in your 11th house. So the 11th house is the house that has to do with friends, with the group, with your networks, you know, your allies, your supporters. Um, sometimes it speaks of humanitarian causes, um, but it could also have to do with like, um, you know, your vision for the future and like the supporters that can help you achieve that. And so for you, Aries, there's been something, something was initiated around late December through to early February, right? Late December, we had the Saturn Jupiter conjunction at one degree Aquarius, same exact spot in the sky, this full moon is happening. And then we had the new moon, the initiation point um, in Aquarius, the initiation point of this cycle in February. And so if you think around that time, what was going on in your life in terms of like what new beginnings were happening there in terms of the group, friends, networks, allies, supporters, your vision for the future, all those things. And it may have felt like a slog, right? Like Saturn's in there, nose to the grindstone. There could have been like trials and tribulations that have been happening in relation to these themes. But if you've been, you know, if you've put on your big girl pants and you've been doing the work, then um, this full moon is likely to bring about some sort of a release point, um, a culmination, an initial bearing of fruit. And then there will be another point where we'll see more fruit on the vine at the end of August at the second full moon in Aquarius. So like maybe, um, you know, you've been working to um, initiate some new friendships, for example, and it's been hard, right? Again, there's been a pandemic. There hasn't been a lot of opportunity, at least where I am, for for getting out with people in groups and stuff like that. And and um, and now we're starting to see those restrictions, you know, be lifted more and more. And there's more opportunity for gathering with the group, for seeing friends, um, you know, and it could have to. This could have to do with something revolving around like networking with your supporters. Or your, um, you know, building like your your um, some kind of like if like I just I don't know why I just thought of this, but like say you're somebody that's like building like a membership site or something like that, right? Where you're gathering like minds, or that's your intention, and you had this idea, you know, months ago at the beginning of of this year. And, but it's been just like not happening because there's been so much hard work and obstacles and delays and all these things that well now maybe you're going to launch it or at least there's going to be an initial announcement about that or something, right? So that's what's going on for you, Aries. Um, and we're going to move to last but not least in this case, Pisces. So Pisces, you're not always last. If you watch these videos all the time, you know that that's not the way I do things. But uh, in this case, you are. And that's because this full moon is culminating in your 12th house. And so for you, this is um, speaking to themes of what goes on behind closed doors, literally or metaphorically speaking, right? Like in the unconscious, it could be. It is about how you spend time in... Um, solitude and in isolation um for better for worse it could be like you know how you like taking a retreat or a vacation or a break um retreating from the world um uh, intentionally or perhaps not intentionally because it involves uh, you know some kind of a like a hospital stay or um you know some kind of convalescence or recovery period um, because the 12th house does speak to institutions like, um, you know, spiritual retreat centers and things like that, but even things like, um, hospitals and hospices and prisons and, and rehab facilities and, and all of those as well. Right. So, um, of course that is going to be something very particular to just a few people, but it is a theme. It is a 12th house theme. So, you know, back at the end of December, through to potentially like February, like mid February, where we had something being initiated in terms of the Aquarius house in your chart and those 12th house themes, 
we're now reaching this point where there's a, an initial um, insight into the work you've been doing there paying off or an initial like um, like like there's a there's a culmination of some point or something's bearing the initial fruit and then later in August when we have the second full moon in Aquarius there will be an, another level another layer to that culmination um, and Jupiter moving back into your 12th house may you know, give you like, it has been in your first house, which is nice, but it's like Saturn's been doing some really hard work and maybe causing a bit of strife, you know, um, on its own there. And so Jupiter is going to go back in there and kind of, you know, whereas Saturn has the potential to be pessimistic and depressive, Jupiter is a little more optimistic. And so Jupiter can go in there and even though it's in Saturn's house, so there are rules to follow. Um, it can still be like, you know, can, let's just, you know, let's just, here's a blanket. Let's just go sit down and, and relax for a little while. Right. And maybe enjoy the, the retreat. Like maybe the retreat you've been on has been one that you haven't really been enjoying because it's been forced. Like you've been stuck behind, you know, in the four walls because of the pandemic or whatever. And, um, so that part has, has sucked, but now maybe the retreat is going to be one of your choosing and you get to go on vacation for a little right? And, and, and an intentional retreat, for example. So, um, you know, think about those 12th house themes and, and how that is um, personal to you in some way, right? And, and that's what we're talking about here. So, okay, that's all 12 signs. Um, and I hope that you found this helpful, insightful. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. I'd super appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. And, um, you know, if you comment it and if you share with people that you think might be interested in uh, my take on things. So take good care. I may or may not see you next week, but I'll be back soon. All right. Bye for now.